we tend to get ideas um, by being uh, irked a little bit about something that uh, doesn't seem efficient, uh, doesn't seem right, uh, something that could be improved systematically uh, with the sorts of tools that we have available. There's a, some kind of matchmaking process in our brains that matches what uh, the tool kits that we have um, to tackle problems uh, from clinical informatics, from bioinformatics, from public health informatics, and uh, the deficiencies that we may see in a system uh, or in a set of questions uh, that uh, have not yet been answered. An example uh, is uh, the Personally Controlled Health Record Project, uh, which is uh, well over a decade old, where we saw numerous issues uh, across the health system where data were never available for a patient uh, at the point of care. We saw issues where uh, the data was uh, under the stewardship of organizations that didn't always have the patient's best interest in mind. Uh, and we uh, saw uh, situations where we wanted to do research across populations but couldn't get the right uh, data sets. From my perspective, there's, all, there's an interesting finding in almost any piece of data that you look at. I don't know if you've read the book Freakonomics, but it, it, there is a real parallel here to thinking about association between data sets that we wouldn't ne necessarily think are related. Um, and in fact, in terms of health, there's always, a, there's always downstream from a, a, an event of significance in the population, whether it's an introduced drug or it's, a, a, it's an event like 9-11, there's always a downstream health effect that can be noticed. And it's just thinking through a problem to think about where those effects exist. And I think that's a really exciting and a part of the job is to think about those questions and think about, you know, the empirical data. So, for instance, a lot of people in, in epidemiology are working in the area of disease modeling, thinking about how to predict an event through simulation. The trick, really, I think, is understanding that there are certain phenomena um, that will have an effect at a scale uh, that will enable that effect to be visible across the population. Frankly, when we first started the Vioxx study, I thought it was a reach that we would be able to see the impact of COX-2 inhibitors on something as global as myocardial infarctions. But when we plotted the data, the effect was dramatic. Uh, when John and I were looking at um, uh, the impact of uh, airline travel on mortality and the impact of the uh, September 11th flight restrictions on mortality from influenza. Again, something you would think, maybe I can see it, maybe I can't, but the scale of the uh, um, effect would be such that perhaps you could since flight travel was restricted across the country and beyond. So one trick is figuring out what you can see with the data sets that you have available and to match the impact um, with the scale that you can resolve in your data. Um, data in the healthcare system uh, tend to be collected on relatively small fraction of the patients that we see. Uh, the research enterprise and the uh, ability to deliver high quality healthcare require data on large numbers of patients. Uh, but there are barriers to that happening. One is that we rarely share data across institutions. Two is that we collect data uh, under protocols on very small numbers of patients uh, and we use uh, the data from those uh, protocols to answer a narrow set of questions. What this means is that we have studied a very tiny fraction of the patients in our system where the ideal would be that every patient who comes in to our healthcare system has the opportunity to contribute data to improve the quality of healthcare and to drive the research enterprise. It would be a foreign concept in manufacturing 
to monitor only a very small fraction of the uh, products uh, that are coming off the assembly line. To increase the uh, amount of data that we're able to collect to drive uh, the research and discovery process of children's, we need to do several things. First of all, we need to um, manage the consent process so that we can be transparent about the need to use data in research and engage our patients as collaborators with us in that process. Secondly, we need to uh, manage to capture better and richer data during healthcare encounters. We have patients here all the time. We need to use our systems, our technologies, to and, uh, and manage our logistics uh, in such a way to get the critical data from all of our patients captured electronically at these encounters. We also need to extend the envelope uh, 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 within which we capture data to include patients outside the hospital in our outpatient clinics and at home. Uh, this means uh, having uh, uh, communication uh, and data flow from uh, practice records out in the community and in specialty areas. It also means uh, engaging patients at home using personally controlled health records and other means to get those data in. Patients contribute specimens to us uh, on many of their visits, blood, urine, uh, tissue. And once again, we need to make sure that we are capturing uh, those specimens in a way that enables us to align it with the data from the other parts of the healthcare system, data about what the patient has, what the patient's experienced, what their phenotype is, what their health outcomes are, so that we can uh, drive the discovery process.